Welcome to a Lean Stacks instructional video. This is the third and final episode of the Spring Security Fundamentals series. In this episode, we complete the addition of a custom Spring Security solution to the Greeting Web Services project that was constructed as part of the Spring Boot Fundamentals series. In the last episode, we constructed business services and a custom security user details service. In this episode, we will build an authentication provider and use Java configuration to wire the components together and declare the security rules for our application assets. In the last episode, we created a custom user details service. Let's put that to use in our authentication provider class. Before we begin, let's look at the Spring Security API docs. Notice the number of abstract and base implementations of the Authentication Provider class. Since we're using the User Details object to represent the user requesting access, we'll extend the abstract User Details Authentication Provider. Now open the Spring Tool Suite. In the org example WS security package, create a new Java class named Account Authentication Provider, which extends the abstract user details authentication provider class from the Spring Security project. Annotate the class with the component annotation so that it's detected and registered by the Spring Component Scanner when the application is started. Use the auto-wired annotation to inject the account user details service which we created in the last episode in this video series. Also inject a password encoder component into the class. As you may surmise from its name, the password encoder hashes passwords and also provides the ability to match clear text passwords to previously hashed values. We will discuss the password encoder later in this episode. The Abstract User Details Authentication Provider class defers the implementation of two methods. The first is named Retrieve User. In the body of this method, we use the Account User Details service to retrieve a user details object for the account whose username attribute matches the value of the supplied username method parameter. The second method is named Additional Authentication Checks. Within this method, we implement the logic to validate the supplied credentials. Note that the logic provided by the Abstract User Details Authentication Provider class ensures that the user details attributes such as enabled, locked, credentials expired, etc. are all in good standing. If any of those Boolean attributes is false, the abstract class throws an authentication exception for us. We simply need to implement the password validation logic. The username password authentication token method parameter carries the username and password values supplied by the user. Ensure that both the token and user details object contain password values. Next, use the password encoder to ensure that the clear text password in the token matches the previously hashed password value in the user details object. If any of these checks should fail, throw a bag credentials exception.
The final component of this custom security solution is the Java configuration class to wire the components together and declare authorization rules. In the org example WS package, create a class named Security Configuration. Annotate the class with the configuration annotation so that it's detected and registered by the Spring Component Scanner as a class providing application context configuration information. Also annotate the class with Enable Web Security to tell Spring Boot that we're overriding the out-of-the-box Spring Security configuration. Next, use the auto-wired annotation to inject the Account Authentication Provider class into this configuration class. Now create a method named Password Encoder and annotate it with the Bean annotation. The Bean annotation inst instructs Spring to register the method response as a bean in the application context. We simply instantiate a new bcrypt password encoder class, which is the password encoder implementation recommended by Spring Security for both strength and portability. Next, create another method named configureGlobal with a single method parameter of type Authentication Manager Builder. Annotate the method with the auto-wired annotation so that Spring injects the Authentication Manager Builder instance into this method for us. Within the method body, use the builder to tell Spring Security to use our custom account authentication provider implementation. Next, we need to configure the authentication and authorization rules. We have two sets of web service assets to secure, the public API and the actuator endpoints. The Web Security Configurer Adapter class is used to facilitate a builder-style approach for security configuration. While I could use a single adapter instance to configure the authorization rules for these two sets of assets, I will show you how to create multiple security configurations within a single application. Note that this approach is typically used when you need to use different forms of authentication for different assets. Perhaps you want to use basic auth for your web services, but form-based auth for another portion of your application. It's overkill for our requirements, but it's an important concept to learn and understand. Each set of security rules is defined within a static inner class that extends the Web Security Configurer Adapter. Annotate this inner class with configuration and order to register them with the application context and to inform Spring Security of the order in which the rule sets should be processed for each incoming request. Override the configure method of the Web Security Configure Adapter class. The HTTP security method parameter facilitates a builder style approach for security rule definition. Using the HTTP security class, I configure the web paths for which these rules apply. Next, I configure the required role, think of granted authority, for w which a user must have to access this set of web assets. I declare that HTTP basic authorization, or basic authentication, will be used and Spring Security will extract the credentials from the HTTP header automatically. 
Finally, since I'm securing web service assets, I want the application to remain stateless. By default, Spring Security caches successful user authentication requests in the HTTP session. I will disable this feature using this, the session configuration. Notice that I've used comment statements turning the formatter on and off. These comments serve as instructions for the Spring Tool Suite, instructing it to preserve my code formatting. I'm going to declare a second static inner web security configurer adapter class for the actuator endpoints. This configuration is almost identical to that which was used to secure the application API. However, the user must have the sysadmin role to access the actuator assets. Note that you may configure as many web security configure adapters within your application as you need to provide various security configurations for all of your web assets. Let's run the application to test the security solution. Open a terminal window and change directory to the project base directory. Type MVN Spring Boot Run and press Enter to start the embedded Apache Tomcat web server. I'll use the Postman RESTful web service client to test security. First, let's test the application API, which fetches all greetings. I'll try to access the web service without any authentication. As expected, this fails. Next, let's create a basic auth header, but I'm going to purposefully enter a bad password. Once again, this fails. Let's test one more time, but this time I'll enter good credentials. As expected, we get a good response. Now let's test the actuator endpoints. Remember that they require a user with the sysadmin role. Let's try to access an actuator endpoint but with a user that does not have the sysadmin role. As expected, this fails. Let's test again, but this time let's use the credentials for a user that has the sysadmin role. This time we receive a successful response. I hope that you've enjoyed this third and final episode of the Spring Security Fundamentals series. Subscribe to the Lean Stacks YouTube channel and follow the Lean Stacks Google Plus page to receive updates as new episodes are published. As always, you can find more information on leanstacks.com. To view the complete repository illustrated in this episode, see the GitHub repository URL in this episode's description.